Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is March the 21st, 2024. We are continuing our study on the Passover. We are looking into the last two days of the the Passover week. <laughs> the sacrifice, um, which was done uh, between evenings on the 14th. And then the final day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So, let's go ahead and get started. The Jews thereof, because it was the preparation, it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. We have been taught that the high day is a day um, when one of the feast days falls on the Sabbath. And I, I thought that was very strange, and you probably thought this too. Feast days fall on the Sabbath all of the time. All of the time. Why is this only in the Bible one time? <laughs> it's because it doesn't mean that. The high day is the new year. When you look at the use of the word high, it's they're speaking of the new year. The Sabbath day was the beginning of the year. So let's look at the scriptures. Oh, let's look at, well, we'll look at this definition. I don't know if we need it, but we'll look at it anyway. It means great of the external form or sensible appearance of things or of persons, in particular of space and its dimension, its dimensions as respects. Um, it's just, it's, a, it's great. It's a great day. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. This is um, Jacob. When he's at the well, he's speaking to one of the men at the well. And um, they're standing there because there's a stone over the well. Somewhere in this story, I didn't look it up. Somewhere in this story, Laban, his, his father-in-law, had said to him, I knew that you were blessed because when the day that you came, the spring opened. So apparently water was precious back then. And so the men were standing at the well. I mean the water was precious there. The men were standing at the well because everyone watered their sheep at the same time. This is the impression that I got just from a brief reading. I'm not really sure if this is if this is the correct story. You can check behind me. I just read through it quickly. So anyway, but anyway, Jacob tells him he doesn't understand why people are standing there because he's not from there. And so he just advises him. He says, hey, it's not high noon yet. <laughs> it's, it's, he, when he says high day, he's speaking of high noon or, or close to it. <laughs> it's not high day yet. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together where they, in the afternoon when they would sit down in the shade after being out all day in the sun running around playing okay so neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together go ahead and water your sheep and go and feed them because they were just standing there <laughs> talking to him and he says we cannot until all the flocks be gathered together until they roll the stone from the well's mouth then we water the sheep In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, by Haggai the prophet, unto Zerubbabel the son of Shittatel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jodesh, the high priest, saying, We know what the high priest is. He's the priest that's over all of the other priests. <laughs> Great. He's a great priest. It's the great day. It's the first day. It's just like New Year's Day. It's the height of the year. Then shall ye know, it, there's nothing to indicate that there's something special about a feast day falling on the Sabbath. 
it might be a great inconvenience to have your feast day fall on the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, this is the great day because it's just like the countdown to the, just like we do on our New Year's. New Year's start over. But th theirs was a great celebration. And um, it was their greatest celebration because this was when everybody was supposed to come out. Well, this was a great celebration because it's the Passover celebration in the celebration of the new year coming in. But I don't know if the new year meant anything. It's the Passover celebration in the day that they came out of Egypt. Then shall you know that I am the Lord when the slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars upon every high hill in all the tops of the mountain and under every green tree and under every thick cloud the place where they did offer sweet savor to all their idols. Well, this is a different high. I didn't realize it at the time. 7311 To rise up, to rise up, to be high, to be lofty, exalted. But that's what high is. And you can tell if you look at the context of the word. It's not It has nothing to do with with the, the day falling on the Sabbath. The Sabbath day was a and high day. It was a new year. That's what they're saying there. And that's correct. Because Jesus died on Friday. The next day was the Sabbath. It was also the first of the year. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, we'll look at Samuel. Okay. Oh, hold on. No. I wanted to look at Okay, so let's look at David and Jonathan. So, and David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fail to sit with the king at meat, the new moon being the beginning of the month. It is the beginning of the year. Now, this word doesn't mean new moon, it means new month. But they will use the word new moon later down so that we know that it's the beginning of the year. Um, wait, it, he could use it in the context of the beginning of the year or the seventh month. Um, I'm saying it's the beginning of the year. I, I don't know if there's evidence of that or not in here. I just, I didn't even think about it until now. And I should not fail to sit with a king, the king at meat. But let me go that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. That word, that word day isn't there. Until the third at evening. If thy father, if thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. A yearly sacrifice because the Passover was sacrificed once by the men in the temple. No one else needed to do it. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God, everyone else celebrated. Everyone celebrated, but they didn't need to make the sacrifice. That was done by the priest. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow, any time, or the third, between the first and the third, he's trying to say, um, or the third, not the third day, the third day of the month. And behold, if there be good toward David, and then and I and I then send not unto thee, and show with thee, the Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. We don't need all that. 
And Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, thou shalt go down quickly, and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business when business was in hand. On a regular business day, that's what he's telling him. Because the next day is going to be a Sabbath. So the third day is going to be a business day. And he's telling him when the business was in hand. And shall remain by the stone Ezel. So David hid himself in the field. And when the new month was come, the king sat him down to eat meat. They're expecting David because of the celebration. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that the day. New month, of course, would not be a celebration if you don't understand that the beginning of the month is the full moon. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second of the month, that David's place was empty. They all thought, wait a Skip something. And the king sat upon his seat, as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. That's the first. So then we'll jump to 27. And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day, second of the month, David's place was empty. And Saul said unto Jonathan his son, Wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet, neither yesterday nor today? And of course he gets mad and we'll read this. And he said, let me go, I pray thee, for our family has a sacrifice. He's telling them that David had a sacrifice in the city. Um, and that's why he didn't come. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month. The day after David was expected for the feast. So let's look at the next scripture here. So the priest gave him hollowed bread. Oh, so David, um, David has just left, and he's um, he's left Jonathan. He knows that Saul is trying to kill him, and he goes to the priest and he asks for food. And the priest gave him hollowed bread, which was the twelve loaves from that were um, before um, on the on the table of showbread. He gave him some of that bread because they change it out on the Sabbath. So the hollowed bread has leaven in it. <laughs> he gave him hollowed bread the day after. So if the feast was on the first and it's the week going after, then he would have had leavened bread in the temple three days after the feast. But let's read the scripture. So the priest gave him hollowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in uh, in the day when it was taken away. It had been taken away the day before on the Sabbath. He had some left. He gave it to David. It That bread was leavened. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship. Oh, that was it on that study. I just wanted to point out that there was leavened bread in the temple on the day when they said no leaven is supposed to be in the entire country. I've not found a scripture why. I've not found a scripture why. We're told in the New Testament. I didn't put it in here because I have a separate study for all of that. But uh, we're told in the, it's not until the New Testament that they give some hints as to what we're supposed to believe about unleavened bread. We're just told not to do it with no explanation whatsoever. We know that, well, you, we, it does make it clear that leavened bread, raised bread, is luxurious. So, the natural, so yeah, I guess we are told because. Leavened bread is luxurious. It's the better bread. It is the sweet bread. They just changed the definition. <laughs> but it actually would be the bread of affliction. That's what unleavened bread would be. 
And this man went up, went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Yearly, one, once a year, to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts. Not three times, one time. And it's also, um, I believe, hold on, yearly, three, 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 one, one, seven. It's not daily. And the man, uh, this is still Samuel, Samuel, I didn't realize it or I wouldn't have put it in here twice. And the man El Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice. The yearly sacrifice and his vow. Because they were, he was expected to go. He would have been a firstborn son probably. But Hannah went not up. For she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord. And thereby forever. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. For us, I think the rest of these scriptures are going to be support scriptures for the rest of the rest of the studies. I can't, I don't think I have any um, more honed in studies, but these are going to be support scriptures for what we've already what I've already presented. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them, in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifices. So all that stuff in, um, in Exodus 12 where it said make this offerings and this that and the other. No. <laughs> no. It was not said. It was not said at that time. That's for sure because it conflicts with that scripture. And Moses went up, and it, and it wasn't said because they wrote it all backwards. They wrote it backwards so they couldn't change the actual feast from the end of the year to the beginning of the year. Isn't it so strange that this is supposed to be one of the most important things in the Bible, the sacrifice, the Passover sacrifice. And all over the Bible, all you see is unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, unleavened bread. It, unleavened bread, unleavened bread, unleavened bread. Every single, everywhere. Everywhere. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him, called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you out, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. I put this in. I broke it up, but I put this in because of the previous verse. Because he said, obey my voice. But I broke it up, so I wanted to let you know that's why that was in there. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest, Aaron's son, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Oh, I put this in here as a reminder that um, to tell you that the burnt offerings are wholly burnt up. I'll try to go through this. I'll, well, I'll check my video first and see if I need to go through it again. I'd, I'd rather not, but I may have to. Um, 
somewhere in here it says it's a free will offering of its own voluntary will if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd let him offer a meal without blemish he shall offer it of his own voluntary will um, it'll be a lamb you would not burn up a whole bull on that on that altar bulls are the lamb of course is the um, lamb of God represents Jesus and then the bull represents the father but it also represents um, it's a fatted calf represents plenty, plenteous or, or um, wealth and excess and all those good things you know <laughs> because everyone can eat off of that fatted calf so you are doing well and you are happy and fed if you have the fatted calf that's what it's supposed to be so the fatted calf the ox was killed the ox was killed to be a part of a feast or to be part of a celebration the lamb is the sacrifice we all know about the lamb and then of course the wheat represents us here and the barley um, the other nations and thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof two ten steels shall be in one cake a cake and I can't recall if I put this in here a cake is leavened and if it says cake is just leaven it'll say unleavened cake when it's unleavened I don't know how I don't know how you can make a cake without leaven but there are scriptures in here that say unleavened cake so hey not that they're true but this doesn't say it so we don't have to worry about it now and thou shalt set them in two rows six in, six on a row upon the pure table before the Lord and thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row that it may be on the bread for a memorial even an offering made by fire unto the Lord every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant he made provisions for the bread it's supposed to be taken from the children of Israel as an offering. Everything that's needed for that bread in the tabernacle is taken. The frankincense, anything that's needed. He's made provisions right here <laughs> from the children of Israel. It comes from the offerings. Because, it, because no person can be responsible for it because it's over and it's it's in excess of the tithe and it cannot be and his princes gave willingly unto the people to the priests and to the and that's that's it's just so that I just have one more thing to say real quick that's why he put it here <laughs> this is why he tells you where to get it from this is why he tells you where to get the lamb from because he knows you only have to give you only have to return that 10 percent anything behind that has to be a free will offering that's the way it works oh and unless he tells you it's a provision for it Okay, you can get it from the offerings, you can do this, whatever you need to do, it comes from the offering. He'll say, this is the provision, this is where you get it from. So no person is responsible beyond their 10%. Okay? And its princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hil 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 Hilkiah and Zechariah and Jah Jahiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priest for the Passover offerings 2,600 small cattle and 300 oxen it was not burnt up it was eaten they removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions oh, we've already read that that's for something else And it shall come to pass, oh, I didn't highlight this. And it shall come to pass when ye become to the land which the Lord will give you 
according as he has promised that ye shall keep this service. This is the Passover service. It was supposed to be kept when they come into the land which the Lord gives them. It wasn't even done in the wilderness. But have them tell it it was done once, at least once, um, in the second year. Because he told me to keep it then. Well, there's a scripture for it, so. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with instance. He didn't cause them to do that in the wilderness. He does not require, this is telling you again, that he doesn't require any of this stuff from you. It's not required. It's a free will offering. None of this is required. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. And that's why he doesn't require them. By, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that this, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifice God is well pleased. Let's take him for his word. He says he's not pleased with one, he is pleased with the other. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. That's my last scripture. This is, again, this is an incomplete study. We are going to look at other verses so that we can understand that the Feast of Unleavened Bread is not real. It's just made up. Also, it, um, what was the other studies? Uh, I'm going to present that. It was only the firstborn son that needed to go. He's representing, just as the Levites represented the firstborn, the firstborn needed to make the pilgrimage once a year for the Passover. And something else, but I can't think of it right now. Anyway, we'll just stop there and I will talk with you. And then, well, let me just recap real quick. I was presenting that the feast um, takes place at the end of the year. Uh, the sacrifice was done. There was one lamb that was sacrificed on at on at high noon um, between evenings on the 14th, and then it took you into the 15th, which was the beginning of the year, and that was a feast of celebration. You did not eat that lamb; you ate the fatted calf um, as part of the celebration. The lamb was burnt up, but I didn't present that. I didn't present the burnt up part. I just told you that. That will have to be another time. Okay. Now, I'll stop there. And I will talk with you in the next video.